Unraveled by Jake Broder. Anne and Robert Adams' Home, Living Room. Anne and Robert are playing Scrabble. If I win, you'll finally do it. No, we got married under that tree. Oh, you're such a sensitive old goat, you know that? <laughs> Robert, all I can see is leaves, leaves, leaves. I want to see more from my studio. And don't kill the Arbutus. It's Arbutus. Not your Butus. Or my Butus. But, but our, our Butus. That joke's so lame. And yet we make it. Hmm. If I win, you'll cut it like we said. Yes. You will? Yes. Yes, I will. And if I win, you never paint another strawberry. Your turn. Okay. Go. Go. Hold Go. on. I can't think. It'll come. Mm, I can't think. And I will destroy you. Stop. Oh, I can't remember the word. Well, you only have seven letters, so it can't be that hard. Ah, yes, the one with all the points, because I've got Q and Z and O. Oh. No, oh, no, go on. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you all my letters. I'm happy for you to tell me all your letters. I don't want to tell you all my letters. Well. Oh, oh, Quartzy. Oh. Quartzy. It's worth 164 points, and I'm playing it, and I win, <laughs> and I'm the best, and you're not the best. And, and I'm the best. <laughs> you, you are cute. How am I cute? Because in that chest-thumping victory rant, in Scrabble, no less, you're only willing to come out with, not the best. You refuse to be mean. It's kind of adorable. I'm plenty mean. I just beat you utterly pantsless. I just don't feel the need to rub your... Well, maybe I do. <sighs> okay, I see what you mean. You could do that. What? Get me utterly pantsless. Robert. I'm just saying, it's a possibility. Not now, it's in the middle of a game. Yes, and later it'll be too late, and you'll be too tired, and tomorrow morning it's too early. Don't be mean. I I'm just saying, there's a window of opportunity, and you are welcome to do a victory dance and proclaim your victory to the heavens by taking your quarry to bed. I don't really feel like it. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, don't. What? Get all like that. How am I getting? All sulky and frustrated. I haven't even had a chance to yet. I'm still halfway into the wanting you part. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. It's just that Eric is out of the house. I am so happy that he's better, but I'm glad for it to be us again for a bit before you go back. And we never get to. Oh, going back, Robert. Um, uh, do you want one? No, it's not like you. What isn't? To have more than a glass. Well, I need a little Dutch courage. For what? Uh, I've been thinking about uh, this. For, uh, I'm a little. Uh, this isn't going as I expected, partly because I'm anticipating your response and I don't like it. It's making me a little nervous and I resent that. Well, I apologize. I, I'll take that glass. Hmm. Okay, I'll go. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to the lab. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, OK. I thought this was something serious. This is serious. I mean, yes, it's serious. And I just thought the buildup, very big. You aren't usually dramatic. I was worried for a... Wait, what do you mean you aren't going back? What? Well, I've been off for almost eight months now. Yes, and thank God you were. Eric's recovered. I, I never thought he would. I'm not sure it wasn't you that got him to where he is. I'm so proud and happy I could just spit. I don't think you can give me credit for his extraordinary recovery. There are one hand's worth of people in the world who could do what you did for him. It's our son. What do you expect? You gave up eight months of research on your cell line. I took the additional city planning job so you could be here with him. Yes, we were a team, but you turned his prognosis after the crash upside down. That was you. Your work with him. They said he'd never walk, but you... You got the job done. No compliments. I'm not feeling hard done by. That's not what I'm getting at. Okay, what then? 
When I think about going back to the lab, I imagine the late nights, the tunnel I go into, you know. I hear the buzzing of fluorescent lights and it's a very uneasy feeling. I almost smell. Look, I've been enjoying painting and I think I'd like to stick with that for a, for a while. That's what I've been thinking. I haven't. What? Been enjoying the painting. Robert. If I see another strawberry, I'm going to do something. You paint another strawberry, you're going to have to go through some things. Uh, Robert, listen to me. I'm not going back to the lab. I think we are entitled to a reasonable we discussion about... The royal we? You know what? I Don't parse my words like that. Robert, we have a pact. Yes. And it still holds? Yes. So I'm invoking it now. It's that big. Yes. As usual with you, there's something that you understand that I don't. You're my cruncher. And my... Don't call me that. What? Why not? You are. You are my cruncher. And it might take you a moment, but you get there. Crunching the numbers, crunching the data, making piles and more piles until everything is stacked up just so. Never stopping crunch, crunch. Right on through, bite by bite, until you've eaten the whole leaf. And you paint strawberries. You used to paint pictures of houses and now you paint strawberries. This is a waste of resources. That's also kind of at the root of the pact. I can assure you it's not. Well, I don't see it. Well, I can't explain it rationally. Something is telling me to paint. It's deep down. It's the same part of me that led to the cell line. To marry you. The same part that decided to stay with Eric. Didn't Staying with Eric seemed like a leap in the dark. In a way, but we both felt it was the right thing as soon as you said it. This is different. How? I, How is I this different? I don't see the benefit. This isn't worthy of you or of the pact or of the sacrifice it will require. I don't mind making it, but for what? For painting? You aren't a painter. You can't tell me what I can and can't do. You would be wasting your gifts, your experience in your field, and you will leave the world a poorer place, let alone our family. The, the Dalai Lama said oh, that it's better really? said it's better to stay on your path rather than change religions because all roads lead to the same place. You, you'll have to learn the beginning phases all over again and take away from time you could spend in mastery on the path you were on all along. That's enough. You don't get to take a spiritual high ground and no. guru me out of what I I'm want. I'm trying to explain. I don't need you... my choices mansplained to me, thank you. And you certainly do not have the slow down. I just no, want I will to understand. Not slow down. I'm painting bloody strawberries, Robert. That's what I'm doing. I'm stopping to paint strawberries for a while. That should be all I have to say. Yes, that's true. If you were some normal person and it didn't matter, but you're not, and it does. We rearranged everything to get Eric back. I didn't even know if we would ever have choices again, but we do. It's a gift. And now that the crisis has passed, Anne, is, is this because of the phone call? Is this the moment Dr. Stevenson said would happen? Oh, hated that man. Yeah, yeah, he was really condescending, but, but do you remember what he said? I do not. He said that there will be a moment when Eric has stabilized when he was going to get as better as he was going to get, the crisis will have passed. That moment when the armor comes off, there would be an emotional reckoning for when you got the phone call about his car crash, the terrible symmetry of that. But when the moment of paying the piper comes, that would mean that the crisis had well and truly passed. Do you remember that? No, I do not, but you clearly do. I have been thinking about that phone call lately. I would not have traded places with you in that moment for the world. Oh, it was six minutes and 48 seconds from when the police called me to when I was with him. It's absolutely seared in my memory every millisecond. Are you thinking about it enough so that you think that what he said was true? About this being closing the book on the crisis passing? Yeah. No. No, I don't. Well... No, it was when I started to have the smells and the, and the sounds of the lights and the flies in the lab that clinched it. Wait, smells? Yeah, like flies buzzing around a dead body. That smell gets in my nose when I think about the lab. You actually smelled something? No, 
Well, yes. I mean, can you hallucinate one? If so, then yes, I did. Do you ever? Do I ever what? Have a feeling that has smells in it. No, not, not really. I'm not that vivid. Well. Does this mean I have to keep on pretending to know things about traffic for the city? I think it does. I'm working two jobs so you can paint? Yes, I think you are. Ain't uh, life grand? Peachy. You, know, you won't regret it, Cruncher. It'll be an adventure. What about your tenure? Are, are you taking indefinite sick leave? Can you even do that? I don't know. Isn't this like a judge? You sit until you die or can't yes, you? Yes, I suppose. Well, if you don't come back, can't they take away your chair? Yes, but that's part of the choice. It's just money. You're still working. I don't want to have to make that choice. Well, jackass, you don't have to. What do you mean? Because I am. You... Seriously, who are you and what have you done with my wife? A formal speaking engagement. Okay. 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 Uh, I'm going to explain modern art, uh, which is a bit weird because I'm a neurologist. But uh, bear with me, okay? There are certain kinds of seagulls. When they're born, they have a mother with three yellow stripes on her neck and a red spot near her cheek. Uh, she flies to her nest and the little ones reach up when they see her stripes and they peck at the red spot and then she gives them food. So there was uh, an experiment where a stick was painted with, with three yellow stripes and given a, a red spot on top. They showed the stick to some seagull chicks. They treated it the same way as a mother. They wanted food from it. Uh, they got very excited when it was near them. If there was a seagull art gallery and all it had in this gallery was a stick, with a red spot on the top. Seagulls would come in and go, you know, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's, there's something about it that reminds me of my mother. I, 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 I get this hungry feeling. I, I love it, but I don't know why. That is modern art. Living room, a month later. I can't invent more lanes or less cars. What's the brief they gave you? Uh, invent a traffic system that flows biologically. I... Well, this will cheer you up. No, not really. I'm taking them out. You're what? I'm getting rid of them. I'm done. Oh, thank God. You never have to see it again. Is that a promise? Yeah, a strawberry in space. Strawberry in repose, strawberry coming out of a faucet. What's not to love? Do you want to say goodbye to them? The only thing I could say to them. <laughs> Why are you in such a jammy rage? Oh, God. I mean, spread me and turn me to jelly. What is wrong with you? I <laughs> occupy the bad taste square in this relationship. That you do. But this is, this is... Uh, Unbearable. You... Yeah? <laughs> Crazy. A formal speaking engagement. When cubism started to uh, rear its head, it caused a, a revolution in, in the art world. Why? Because it violated one of the fundamental neurological rules of visual processing, coordinated continuity of perspective. That means we look at something from one place. We see it like that. The magic of cubism, the reason why a certain Picasso is, is so thrilling to look at is because there's a face looking both at you and away from you at the same time. The model is being painted from two perspectives simultaneously. Perhaps Picasso's genius 
was that he was able to be in two places at once, to paint her from the front and the side at the same time. He, he painted movement. No, better, he translated time into a visual form. It's a bold leap. Living room, 2 a.m. Oh, I can't do this. It turns into morning. Hey. Hey. I had a dream I was Ida Rubenstein last night. Who's that? Oh, that lady from your department? She was a dancer in Paris a hundred years ago. She wasn't very good. Hmm. She was in love with a composer, Ravel. I think she tried to get him to marry her. I don't know if she ever did. Hmm. But she commissioned Bolero. What's that one? Oh, yeah, from 10. Hey, we made it to that in college, right? I'm talking about Ida Rubenstein, okay? Okay. She was a dancer. And you know, her family had her actually locked up in an asylum because she was acting on stage. Why? Because it was unseemly for women to be on stage. Wow. Oh, but her brother and her father sure go to the theatre. God, such hypocritical nonsense. Men are pigs. Since when are you? Uh... Bye, hon. Okay. Have a nice day. Yeah, okay, bye. Oink, oink, <laughs> bye. Anne's studio. She finds a record album and puts it on the turntable. She starts stretching two giant canvases on the back wall. She goes to turn the record over and then sees she hadn't turned it on. She turns the record on. You're still listening to this? Yes. It's famous. Is that all of mine that is? No. I mean, well, this is your masterpiece, but uh, the rest is for people who really like music. Well, that's a disappointment. No, oh, you should be proud. People make it to this in college, it's a thing. Pardon? Oh, oh, and Torval and Dean, they were with this in 84. He wore her like a cape. And imagine me with cornrows running down the beach, but imagine that I'm hot like Bo Derek, and you could be Dudley Moore. Who? Uh, he played the piano too. You're clearly insane. This is exactly why I stay away from women. She takes the needle off the record. I started listening to this and I can't stop. Does it feel good? No, but there's something. You wrote this. You're nuts. You might be rather interesting. Why are you listening to it? Can't play it. I can see it and it doesn't feel very good. No, I can't place your accent. Where are you from? 21st century. And what did you say was bothering you? Living room, two days later. What? I said, I can't believe you're still in your pajamas. Yes, I am. <laughs> Hi. What are you doing? What, what are you working on? Anne. Days later. I don't know, Eric, you tell me. You know, before I thought it was her just missing you, or I don't know, the change or something, but now she's walking around in a daze, uh, listening to Bolero all the time. 
Bolero, classical music. She won't let me in the studio. I even knocked when you called. And I know she's doing something, but it's secret. Y yeah, that's not like her at all. And she hasn't kissed me in weeks. <laughs> it's not gross. It's weird. She's just not there. Living room, daytime. Hi. She kisses him. Okay. That was unexpected. Okay. She kisses him again. A good one. So we're on again? Yes. Well, we have a nod. No, I mean, well, yeah. I mean. Oh, crunchy. I love you. It's confusing, you know. I know. Got to get back to the. Later, Anne comes in a colorful matching outfit. It's very garish. Well, this is a turn of events. Yeah. It's bright and. Yes, it's it, right there. It's on your shoes. Yes, do you like it? Sure. It's just that it, it, it goes. There's a theme there. Yes, yes, I can see that. Don't patronize me. Anne, I'm not. Whoa. Don't. I'm, I'm not. It's just not like anything you've done before. But just getting used to it. I'm used to you being a lot more sober and and this I'm not is, drunk. What are you saying? No, no, this is whimsical is all. I meant sober like a judge. You, you keep things close to the vest. Don't wear bright colors or make matching sets of art, clothes, and shoes very often. No, I don't. No, you don't. And at 53, this is just a new side of you. Do you like it? I do. Okay. I'm going to go back to the... Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anne's studio that night. Anne is up a ladder near the top of the painting. She has brushes and a palette on her ladder shelf and a remote. She makes the first marks on the canvas, marking out a box for the first measure. You're repeating the repetitions. My only comfort is you're madder than I. No, think so. It's the comfort of perseveration. I'm not familiar with his work. <laughs> perseveration is the repetition of a particular response, regardless of the absence or cessation of a stimulus. It's usually associated with a brain injury or other organic disorder. Oh, now you're just being nasty. You know, I don't like speaking to you at all. It's 1928, and I'm dreaming about a woman 100 years in the future who likes my music, or rather one piece, which I loathe, and she says is important. I think I'll tell Ida about you. Oh, is she your wife? God, no. She commissioned the bolero. She's a dancer. Not very good. But I do like her. I trust her. She's just someone who looks after me a little. Mm, we need those. I have a husband. Yes. Yeah, he does well enough. Not so lately. He thinks he can dictate terms and control me. Yes, men will do that. Rare is the woman who steps out from behind. That's why I like Ida. She doesn't accept mm. any of it. Then again, she doesn't really like men. She likes... Uh... Oh, oh, I see. Yes. Well, maybe you need to be independent and not tethered to someone who's going to... No, no, I've thought about that for moments, but it's not a chain. I actually love him and I need him. He needs me and I'm fine with that. It's just, he seems to understand me less and less lately. But I can't fault him because I don't understand myself lately. Lately? Lately, I ask, how many hours are in a mile? Is yellow square or round? Lately, most of my thoughts are like that. Since when? Since I turned 53 and heard that infernal bolero. Anne's studio. It becomes morning.
The painting is finished. It's almost sunrise. Anne is totally focused on cleaning up the studio. She finishes and puts Bolero on the stereo. Here. This is hostage -y, you know? No coffee. Shush, shush, just to stand here and listen. Oh, that song, on for months, don't need to. Shush, this is the thing you've been wanting to see. Yeah. Well, you're going to now, but you have to get in the mood. Shouldn't matter. You've got to get in the mood. This is the first time. I'll be better about it later, just. Oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm right. Just no coffee, so I can't make any. I want you to be in the mood, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just shush. Shushing. She holds his hand. They stand side by side facing the painting. Okay. We're in the mood. Okay. Hmm. So? Really, really? You aren't a terrible painter at all. Aha! Uh -huh. So what now? Uh, we take some pictures and we send it to this guy. Well, where did you get this? I've been stopping by a few places on the way home and uh, this gallery was interested. They, he said he wanted to see. For what? For a viewing, a showing, a whatevering. So now you've been doing secret promotion too? Jesus, it's not a conspiracy. I'm not out there on the prowl. Whatever made you think you could control? No, hang on. No, I... no. You are keeping secrets and you never have before. Not one time. Since when are you so possessive of my time? Since when are you not honest with me? You don't get to have every part of me. <sighs> I'm glad you like it. Take the pictures and send them. Did it really hit you? Yeah. A formal speaking engagement. There is a part of the brain that gets activated when we have a strong emotional response to a, a color uh, or a shape. It associates it with a deep instinctual comfort uh, or fear. And, and inside there's an aha. The mind makes that connection like, like a red spot mother. Sometimes we're not even fully aware of it, but get a, a momentary, strangely satisfied feeling when we make that connection. Aha! Uh, Picasso was painting from two points of view at the same time. Aha! But this has been going on in brains on art for hundreds of years. Uh, aha! We notice that there is moisture in the eye of the girl with a pearl earring. That means she is crying. Uh, or Aroused, can't tell which from her expression, but she clearly feels quite a lot. What is it? Aha! We are wired to want as many ahas as possible. We are aha-seeking machines. And if you are like me, uh, or I, I suspect her, it is the only way to reach the sublime. Christopher Cutts Gallery. Her painting hangs on the wall. The opening is in full swing. Hi. You don't like the dress. I, I didn't say that. You didn't have to. I'm not saying anything about the dress. The dress is fine. Ha ha, American fine or British fine. I don't want to be talking about this now. You know what, neither do I. I am making an entrance on the one man who's supposed to notice me and who's eyes are supposed to shine and who's supposed to make me feel good and confident. That's what's supposed to happen. I'm glad you've got it all worked out. Don't ruin this night for me. It's the last thing in the world I want to do. You're very touchy. Are you nervous? No, of course I'm not nervous. This is what I'm doing now. It's a return to... Okay. I'm going to get you a glass of something because I think that would help you not be nervous because you're clearly not. Okay, get me... And your dress is stunning. It's just being worn by a slightly different person than the one I married. I like this one, though. 
living room two days later. I had another nightmare about Ida Rubenstein. Bizarre. Where are you with the traffic? Absolutely nowhere. Do you want me to look at it? No, I got it. I got it. Keep crunching, you'll get there. Don't be so sure. So, in the name of procrastination and avoidance, I was wondering, Yeah. is this a midlife crisis -y sort of thing? <sighs> Blurt things out, why don't you? No, I mean it. Yeah? Yeah, I was thinking the painting, the changing clothes, the jokes, the good sex. No, I'm, I'm not complaining. But you have to agree, it's kind of different lately. Yeah? It's a midlife crisis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I did some looking on the internet. So you know it's true. Well, it says that it usually happens with males because of the pressures of everything, and the alpha of the family is the one who usually experiences it. And I thought, well, you are that, not me, so it makes sense. Uh, the person who drives is the one who gets to blow a gasket, so fair enough, it's you. Ta-da! That is the biggest load of... I thought you'd like it. I can't it. believe it even coming out with that. Nonsense. I didn't. I said it was really? on the internet. I'm not having a midlife crisis. Because things are different and it's not all bad at all. And I'm glad about the gallery and everything, but can we at least agree that things are different? We can. Just, I don't want you to pathologize everything or analyze my every move. Okay. It's just, I just need my own space too, yeah? Of course, yeah, I'm not trying to. It just seems like. I know. I just don't be so. Okay, I won't. Okay? Okay. Okay. Living room. That night. What's the matter? Nothing. No, not nothing. Don't second guess me. If I say I'm not angry, I'm not angry. Okay. I'm not fucking angry. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that was good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just the absolute clarity of it. It's strong and wrong. Mm, that's you. <laughs> no, fuck off, it's not. Hi, Sailor Mouth. <laughs> you, you better come with me. This better go better than last time. I was angry in advance, I'm sorry. New painting? <gasps> Goody. And studio. Oh, I'm peaking now, like I'm on a trip. Oh, whew, maybe even bigger than that. Yeah? <clears throat> yeah. Are, are you ready? Yes. No get in the mood this time? <laughs> no, it's okay. This one's more in your area. It's a number. Which one? Oh, this one made me feel a little sick. Why? I don't know, but in the making of it, that hummy feeling where I lose time completely, it didn't feel as warm as it did last time. Is it that it's not new anymore? Painting. Well, you are getting good at this. The novelty of being this good at something wears off, and maybe you're left with the mundane reality of the decay of rate of change. What? Ah, well, in any new system, in any system, when there's a new reality, there's a period during and right after the change when novelty is the loudest thing, and then over time, with repetition, what was uh, rare and new becomes commonplace. Still good, but less special. Why do I get the feeling you're not talking about painting anymore? Because I'm not talking about painting anymore. What are you talking about? And are you having an affair? No. She pulls off the cover on the painting to reveal her work, <sighs> Pie. This is amazing i love it that's pie is every color a a different number yes oh it's elegant yeah so e to the power of the imaginary number i times pi plus one is zero the elegance of that yeah Feynman had that figured out when he was 13 i barely understand it now i can see it uh, the lines <sighs> it's everywhere all right are you going to have another showing? I don't know. I have to have more than one to merit a whole gallery. Hmm. I'm not Picasso. They're not just waiting for a 
pearl to drop off my brush. It's very sweet of you to think so, though. Oh, fuck, I have a headache. It's a splitter. Yeah, bad. Yeah, my eyes. I, I get these shapes, they're squares, and they have red and yellow edges, and they have blue edges, and, and they sparkle. Uh, and, and then it peaks. That was, what, five minutes ago? And, and then it goes quiet, and, and then the searing pain begins. Oh, that, that's now. Sounds like a migraine. Classic. Oh, oh I'm so glad it's a classic. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sick. Well, is there anything I can do? No. No. It, it, some good news. I can see what my next one's going to be. <coughs> a formal speaking engagement. Her thoughts were transmodal where she took a concept in one form and, and translated it so completely into another. First, she turned music uh, into a visual form. Then she took numbers and made them visual. And then she did it with pain. The third big painting was called Migraine. And it really feels like what a, a migraine looks like. Ask anyone who's had one. Uh, so. Her art is flowering in, in amazing ways. But what about the rest of it? Between people, all we have is our behavior, what we do to others, uh, which I suppose is an unforgiving way to look at relationships, but that's the way it goes. Ida Rubinstein's Paris Flat, 1928. Belly Puck style, two paintings prominently displayed, nudes, one of Ida as Salome, the other of Ida as the Weeping Venus. Arrêtez un moment. C'est vous, Maurice? Oui, mademoiselle. Ugh, not that he gives a ripe shit anyway. She opens the door. You look divine. For you. Perfect. And you yourself. For you. Hmm. He glances at the two paintings of the nude Ida. Ah, perfect. Ah, got you. I knew you'd be afraid. Afraid of what, Ida? Oh, don't be coy. Why do I even? But you keep a lady waiting too long. That's not polite. When a lady is expecting her commission to be perfect, then the lady must wait. Do you have it? I deliver to you the commission for the dance. I call it Bolero. I've been waiting so eagerly for it. I am delighted to receive it. The commission was oddly difficult, but will suit your purposes. Oh, you know my purposes. Tell me why I want what I want. Can you do that? Of course. You're not in the top tier of ballerinas, and you know it. You began training far too late for that to have been a possibility. You do, however, have tremendous stage presence and can act. <laughs> so you want a singular piece of music that allows you to bring something passionate to the fore, as is your string. Do I have it? I insist that you eat. I am peckish. Come, peck. I smell entrecote. Come sit. You Apache boys really must relax. Oh, what do you know of the Apaches? The boys you play with who prefer their own company, those boys. I know them. You assume. I am one. I am a lover. You know Romaine Brooks? She painted these, the nudes. She has been mine for a while. A real lover must dine at the heart's table, not some silly notion of what should be or what goes into what hole. Love is more elegant and ecstatic than that. You know that. I do. You say that, but I have never known you to take a seat at the table. At all. I'll be frank. I want you to sit at mine. <laughs> oh, you're sitting at mine right now. I will share with you a secret. I have been having dreams of a dowdy woman from the future. Dowdy. Who tells me that she is mad and that I am mad and that the first symptom of it is this bolero. In your dreams? Yes. And she's married and struggling with it. He has grabbed the steak knife from the wrong end. The blood starts gushing out of his hand. Monsieur, you're using the wrong end. What? Oh, oh yes. A napkin? Yes, please. Would you allow me to look at it? Perhaps I... I do not want to be looked at like this. No. It was a mistake. It's not just... I didn't know it was the other way. Obviously. No, I didn't know that. You know that. You know when something is facing the right direction. You don't have a problem with words or remembering the names of things. 
you have no fucking idea what it is like to know that there is something coming that is going to eat you alive. Every part. And there are no... No... I have delivered my commission and have delivered my commission, yours. Maurice, I don't understand. No, of course not. There's nothing to... It's a masterpiece. It's a fucking masterpiece. It's perfect. And I'll tell you something else. I hate it, and there's absolutely no music in it. Whatsoever. None. It's a nautilus shell. I will invite you to rehearsal to hear. Good day. You really don't have to leave. You are filled with dangerous presumption, Mademoiselle Rubenstein. I want you to come back inside and touch me. You have a mind and a heart and a body that I want. Isn't that reason enough to stay? Your hand will be fine. I am here exposed before you naked. Is it so displeasing? <laughs> Are you so locked up that you can't take a single step toward me? It is unseemly. <laughs> unseemly? Is it? Lord, I hate that word. What? That word got back to my family in St. Petersburg that I was working on stage that my costumes were unseemly. That is the word that reached them. You know, it came back. My brother-in-law, bony-fingered bastard, he used that word unseemly to declare me legally insane and commit me to a mental asylum for six months. I have spent long enough paying for that word unseemly, and I would ask you in my presence at least never to utter it again. No matter about you staying, I really don't want you now. A heated moment that has well and truly passed. I imagine it goes that way with you many a time. Flame rises that you are expert at dousing, leaving behind this and ashy gray, slightly bitter, crumbly taste in my mouth. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. I'm sure you have no idea. Thank you for the bolero. I shall have it played. If there are notes, may I call on you? Of course you may. She shuts the door in his face. It's the same. Over and over, it's all the same. Oh, he's mad. Arrêtez un moment. C'est vous, Maurice. Uh, oui, mademoiselle. She opens the door. What so soon, Maurice? Have you come back to apologize? Mademoiselle Rubenstein, I have some dreadful news. I have come here to deliver to you a commission. One that caused me a fair bit of grief, not because it was difficult to write the repetitive piece of shit. <laughs> that aside, I had a leather folder and it was copied out perfectly. I, I do not have it. I have lost it along the way. So I must apologize. I will copy it out again, but I, I had to come and it appears... Oh, it appears I've cut my hand. Maurice? Yes? This? Oh, my Lord, you have it. Yes. You have it? How do you have it? Why don't you come back inside and sit down? Do you not remember? How do you have it? You were here a few moments ago. How do you have it? Maurice, How I... do you have it? Living room, six months later. Robert has been in the kitchen making supper. Smells... Oh, I thought it would lure you out because you've been Smells... in the afternoon. Good. Yeah. Does, doesn't it? What's that? Well, I Come on, what is it? I've no stop. stop what? Let me. Uh your okay. traffic mm -hmm. is jam. Ha ha, yes. I can unstick it. Okay, how? This. She reveals a painting of veins and arteries all connected in the shape of highways of the city they live in. Shades of red against the white background like a bloody map. Um Okay, well, thank you. How? What? Don't you want the how? Well, yes, what's the how? Um, look, <clears throat> there's valves on this one. Mm -hmm. One way, stop. One way, stop, it, it flows, like, like blood. Mm -hmm. Or one way, no stopping. It's organic traffic mm -hmm. system. Voila! 
I'll look at it after supper. How about that? I've been seeing the patterns all day. I know. Look, look at your arm. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have traffic jams. Everything goes no. wherever it wants. Yeah. I've been in all day. I know you have, and it's pretty. Thank you. No, not just pretty. For you, this should be unstuck. Listen, I made you entrecote, like in Paris. I made you a map of how I, to fix it. I made you supper. Fine, then. Bon appetit. They both start cutting their meat. Anne has taken the knife from the wrong end. She is holding the blade and cutting the steak with the handle. Her hand starts to bleed a little. It's tough. Anne. Oh. Yes, well. She turns the knife around. Better? Are you okay? Do you want... Better. I made you steak because I wanted to tell you something. Uh-oh. Serious face. Anne, we're having some trouble, you and I. I can't speak to you, and it's like you can't even see I'm here. I made you a map. Yes, and that's very nice. No, but more I, than that, more. But, but I think there's more going on than just stuff between us. I, I love that you paint. but No, that, you don't. Well, I didn't, but that's not it. What then? I think there's something wrong with your words. Something in your... I don't know. Yeah? I, I made you steak. This is serious. <laughs> and... <laughs> serious steak. Okay. And the words. You have to hunt for them. The, the knife you just took backwards. I'm not upset that you made me a painting about traffic. I'm upset that I can't understand it. There are things I know you want to say, but you can't, so you are painting them. That's beautiful, but it's not normal. Something is wrong, and we have to stop pretending that it's not. You see the you... traffic in there. Yes, yes, I do, but I have no idea what it means. You've been painting things that are more than I can... These aren't strawberries. This is so much more. What was bolero? What was pie? Migraine. We have to stop pretending that you are okay. I made... I made... Anne, even <sighs> now, I know you're furious, but you can't find the words. You don't want it! No, I do. The painting is glorious, but I want you to tell. That's the point. I think something is wrong with your words. You can't make them. This didn't just start. It's been going on for a while, and I think we can both be forgiven for not noticing something like hair growing. But I'm you have fine. to admit, it's harder now. I'm you, fine! You do complex things, but I know you can't find the words. Asshole. So I want you to go to Dr. Miller. What? No. I, I want you to go for a scan. That's all. That's all. And... God damn, motherfucking, God damn it. He puts the painting on the counter. His finger traces the patterns of the arteries. My God, you are a genius. Robert. Yeah. Ter terrible news. No, it's okay. No, let me. I know you're pissed with me. I can't remember why, but I wanted to, I made you an art to apologize. Now it's gone. And so I'm apologizing without it. I'm okay? not pissed off with you. Yes, yes, you I... are. And I can't find the art. This? Steal that. No. My... How do you have it? The... Look at your hand. Cut it. With a steak knife. Wrong end. Did? Can I ask you something? Answer true. Okay. You don't remember coming here a few minutes ago, do you? No. Right. A formal speaking engagement. 
a long time ago, I had a strange notion. Uh, I was at UCLA and uh, they thought I was out there. Now this is Los Angeles, so to be out there, there, that takes some doing, okay? Uh, I had patients who suddenly had developed artistic abilities, which came as their language abilities began to deteriorate. This was obsessive creativity, but they, uh, they became my favorite kind of people. I thought that the art had a profound connection to neurology and could be used to comprehend, uh, diagnose, and possibly treat certain conditions. The, the neurological basis of, of behavior, uh, of thought, the, these parts of us are made up of electrical patterns that, 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 that can be observed. Right? We're, we're not stuff, we're patterns. But if the stuff breaks, can it find other ways to make the patterns? Well, as long as there's some stuff, enough stuff, is there a threshold? How much stuff is enough? How much loss is, is too much to work around? Yeah, they, they thought it was out there too. Um, my strange notion was that the mind is more plastic than we ever thought, that a brain is capable of more workarounds. Uh, compensating that uh, whether it's a, a, a degenerative brain disease or you're just tired that a brain can work around almost any obstacle but proof proof of such plasticity of mind that felt impossible dr miller's office blue uh, indicates reduced activity all of which leads to a pretty conclusive diagnosis. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and what you have is frontotemporal dementia. Robert, sit. Yeah, I mean, the, and, and how the does the kind this... of dementia that you're developing is called primary progressive aphasia. There are different variants which depend on which side the degeneration happens. There's some uh, on both sides, but uh, this is clearly favoring the left. All those things you said. Now, you're very fortunate that you have an MRI from earlier that gives us a baseline and that's gonna make this whole process a lot easier. Why? Because we'll be able to see uh, what you look like pre-symptomatically. As things progress, we can see the difference in the frontal lobes. At the moment, it's uh, pretty slight, but it is, it is there. Uh, when is this one from? Five years. Okay. Pre-symptomatic, sure. Hmm, uh, I'm not. Good point. Good, excuse me, what are you saying? That she's had this for a while and we didn't know? I mean, how far back does it go? Oh, uh, that's impossible to say. It's a prodrome, right? It's prodromal. Pro, uh, pro what? Fuzzy line, yeah. symptoms, personality. Okay, great. Now I don't understand both of you. She doesn't know how much her behavior is being influenced by the disease. It's not clear which is governing. Where's the line between uh, conscious choice and, and, and pathological urge. If you don't choose it, but merely forgot to stop yourself, does that still count as behavior? Do I uh, have you right? Yeah. Your wife is a brilliant scientist. Shall I just leave you two? I'm sorry? Robert. So uh, what we are doing is comparing the front now to the front then. You see that ridge that's a little smaller in the one that we just did? Mm -hmm. That appears to be a small amount of tissue loss and that is what's going to progress and that is why we'll see changes. What changes? Well, some of them you've experienced already. Possibles. If it is on the left side of the brain, you, you see a breakdown of language. If it's on the right side, it's a disorder of social cognition. Uh, unlike with Alzheimer's disease, where memory is the problem, with frontotemporal dementia, deterioration on the right means you can lose empathy for others, uh, become disinhibited, lose the ability to make rational judgments, uh, or become addiction prone. Uh, as I said, there is some on both sides, but yours looks like it is going to be on the left. Language. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we are getting to this relatively early. Usually by the time people see me, the entire social network around a patient can be destroyed. We're not going out, there's just me. I, I, I don't mean a thriving social life. I mean, I, I don't usually get a call from a loving husband who wants to bring his wife. 
by the time I get there, usually there's uh, police or, or hospitals or deeply dysfunctional. Have moments. <laughs> yeah, and jokes are usually off the table. Is this <laughs> inevitable? Can we stop it? Not yet. Yeah, listen, this is uh, this may appear to be a strange question. It's something I always ask patients who have primary progressive aphasia. Have there been any changes in your creativity? <laughs> I'll show him a strawberry. <laughs> what? In studio. Wow. This is Bolero. Yeah. Anne prepared her notes about it. She, she wanted to read them to you. Oh, no, you read. Okay, great. <sighs> Unraveling. Bolero. Hmm. Uh, recently, I purchased a keyboard arrangement of Ravel's Bolero. I soon realized I would never be able to play it to any great effect. However, Bolero begs to be analyzed graphically because the tempo is unchanging. Hmm. It progresses uniformly from pianissimo PP to mm -hmm. triple forte FFF. F -F. It is composed of a series of bars repeated over and over. The first modulation occurs 20 bars from the end. Yeah. To represent the exact tempo, the width of each bar is kept exact throughout, but the height of the bars gradually increases. The bars follow in a zigzag pattern, so, so I could use the outrageous pun in the title. The music collapses and dies in the final two bars. I find Bolero an exciting experiment in sound, one which Ravel didn't really consider true music. Music. That's amazing. And, and so fluent. Easier to write. Pencil's not impatient. Yeah, I'm not the best. No. Um, Where are you going? Write a note. Well, thank you for showing me this. I'm... I'm <sighs> We need to get her in for more tests soon. Okay, so that's it? Uh, yes. You'll run more tests? Well, that's all that we can do at this All point. you can do is run more tests? I understand that you're saying. <laughs> you understand very little. That's true. We'll collect whatever data we can on the way down. That's not gonna happen. I know. I'm not gonna let that happen. No, of course. You will not. Robert, Robert, I am not asking her to come in for research. I am saying we need more tests because we don't know how fast this is going to go. It's a progressive disease. The slope of degeneration can be fast or quite, quite slow. We will have to stay on top of it for her sake and for yours so that you know what's coming and we can prepare best care for her. I, I am not asking her to come in for, for research or uh, my idea of science. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I, I gave you the worst news you ever got in your life. You are more than entitled to be angry. I would be. I'm not a scientist right now. I'm a doctor. Okay, for you too. What's going to happen? Well, she's going to continue to lose words. And then it will start to affect movement. Uh, that will be curtailed until she is no longer walking. And then it will get to her core. And she stops moving and eventually uh, stops breathing. Oh, God. Yeah. How long? Well, that's what we don't know. But her painting, that it's part of it? Maybe all she cares about now she, she could see the traffic she, she solved my problem she painted flows of traffic as a series of veins and arteries and, and valves that made it organic she designed a biological distribution system it was beautiful past what i could conceive of and she painted it but but what happens to a person does this explain all the changes from before She's always been brilliant, but she was wearing a gray skirt and we made love in the same position for years. And then she started making puns and, and opened up and painted. That blossom, was that part of it too? Does it count? 
Can she now just disintegrate? I don't know what part of her is really her and which is this fucking disease. I don't know. But you're in for the long haul. Living room that afternoon. Anne stands, focusing on the bowl of pebbles on the counter. You want me to make you some lunch? No. I have no idea what to do with my hands. Dr. Miller says he wants to scan you again. Are you okay with that? Yeah. And we're going to have to make a schedule to go in. There are regular appointments now. And we're going to track progress of this and see if we can fight it. What? What are you thinking? I, I don't know how you're feeling about this. I mean, this is the biggest thing that's happened since... I mean, okay, that phone call. I think we might be even now, yeah? Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll book the appointment for the scan. Anne, what are we going to do? Paint. Anne's studio. Unlike her appearance, Anne has cleaned up her studio. It's not messy. Everything is lined up biggest to smallest. Why do you have a photograph on your easel? What? Are you copying a photograph? It's not a photograph. It's not? No. You couldn't do this the last time we talked. I didn't know I could do it either. How did you do this? I don't know. Just dumped itself into my lap. That is frightening. That's what I said when they asked where Bolero came from. I labor over my sounds. They don't flow quickly. But Bolero was different. It just dumped itself into my lap all at once. I was swimming in the ocean. I had to run in to set it down. At the premiere, the crowd roared. And I knew that this would be the first line of my obituary, and there is not a note of music in it. But the crowd roared, apart from one woman of a certain age. She stood up as I took an obligatory bow, looked me square in the eye, and shouted, Il est fou! Il est fou! He's crazy. And I thought, she understands. Yeah, ever since I heard you, the pictures come, and exactly as you say, I just take them down when they arrive. I'm scared. Of what? That I won't be here to make them and then they'll be lost. And then, and then there's him. Love is crap. Shush. The best thing, the kind thing, would be to leave him. What makes you think I would do that? You want to. I don't. I, I, I do. I do want to. Perhaps I want you to talk me out of it. Frankly, I think it's the only kind thing to do. It would hurt him too much. Less or more than having you disintegrate in front of him. I don't know less because it would happen and then it would be over. That'll work fine. I have just one question through all this. What? Who are you trying to impress? As if that matters anymore. Exactly. Dr. Miller's office, six months later. Robert brings Anne into a table with two chairs. She's walking, but not as well. I'll, I'll be outside when you're done. There are various papers and things on the table. She moves them around to make symmetry. Hi, Anne. Okay. Uh, today, just some questions. I ask, you answer. Nothing to worry about, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Anne Teresa Adams. Where do you live? 242... Elm. Did you forget? No. No. Can't make the word? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the word stuck in your mouth? No. No, and you're... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, what do you do? I do... art. Okay. 
Uh, let's try this picture. Tell me what you see. Use complete sentences like, there is a kite on a string. Okay. Okay. Uh, boy. Kite. Okay, that's okay. Kite. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to adjust your medication, and I want to get you back in here very soon. I also would love to see what you're painting now. Will you show me? Anne's studio, months later. Anne paints ABCs of invertebrates. Her studio is perfectly symmetrical now. Well, you're a busy little bee. I like it like this. These are all much smaller. It's an alphabet of what I saw through my microscope. Touching. Oh, no. It's what I saw and how I learned to name things, so I suppose. Everything is symmetrical now. Yes, I feel better when it's symmetrical. I really need it to be really, really. I think you should tell him about me. I think he's had enough revelations for the moment. Do you really think he's that easily overwhelmed? Yes, I am. And he's not as hearty as me, so of course. Well, I think you ought to let him know. That we have the same disease. That it started at the same time. That Bolero's the thing. Yes. Why? Why would I share you with anybody else? I think it will help. Him, you, I, I think there's something that might come of it. What would I care what comes of it? Self-pity doesn't sue you, dear. Here's what I know. The only reason I'm any good at this is because there's something wrong in the frontal lobes of my brain. That's what I know. The last few years were just a glitch, not really me. Was it? Everything is being taken. This is really shit. I have this. It's that Tennyson poem we like. You're not going to win me round with poetry. Shush. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. I'm going to tell him. Living room. Ravel, 53, Bolero. This is about Maurice Ravel. Wait, he... He had it too. Those three words she spoke. I read the paper about Ravel. The French surgeon who operated on Ravel unsuccessfully found deterioration in his left frontal lobe as well, primary progressive aphasia. And, and Bolero and the painting were calling to each other across almost a century. So that's what made me think to look. I went back to the scans and looked again. We knew that the front was disintegrating, but the back, there were parts of the back that were working harder. There was improvement in the back. We had never considered the idea that the brain might be enhanced uh, dementia creating improvements in the mind, along with deficits. So, those three words, Ravel, 53, Bolero, proof. They are the key to unlocking neurocircuitry and architecture and neuroplasticity. In short, the future. Robert walks Dr. Miller out of the house. She's not really speaking anymore. Those three words, most she said in, I don't know, that's to be expected at this phase. Well, what comes next? There are a lot of possibilities. I, I, I can't predict. Stop being a, just tell me what I need to know. Yeah, I am. Listen, I, I think the best thing is for you to go to this group. They meet uh, Thursdays at 1130 and it's for partners of people who have frontotemporal dementia. I don't need a support group. I need some answers about what to do and what she needs. Okay, well, that's exactly what you get at the support group. I hate support groups. The name is condescending. It just makes them failure clubs. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I don't feel that way. I just hate them. 
Where you go? No. Support group. The following week, everyone sits around a square table. Coffee, water. Carol, a nurse, leaves. So the whole family is there. All the doctors, even the head of the department. I am there for support too. This diagnosis meeting was really intense. Uh, oh, by the way, I just got my hair cut. It was long, and now I am wearing it short. And they tell him that he has it. He hears the words. It's a big moment. So he puts his head down, and it looks like he's going to have a really strong response to all of this. And then he looks up at me. I have just one question, he says. He is so mystified. What is going on with that hair? <laughs> I know, sometimes there's a little bit of funny in there. I mean, you have to keep hold of that part because the other part... To finish off today, I wanted to do something a little different for our new guy. The cards that we all made last week, I wanted to share with him some of the things that I've heard from all of you. Is that okay? Good. Robert, ready? Sure. I want to put her in a care facility. I can't look after her, but I don't want her to leave home. I think she's happy there. It's okay to say it, Adam, and we really need to. I'm paraphrasing this, but everything for him is hard. I don't know if he's even in there anymore. It's hard to tell. If he's locked in and suffering, I don't want that. And if he is not, is he suffering with the loss of himself? Does he know? I can't stand it. Thank you. Oh, this one. <laughs> Paula, I just love your sense of humor. Well, now, in addition to him not really speaking anymore, he can't move very well. I used to have to stop him from stealing cars and driving them off every chance he gets, but he's in the chair now and isn't really moving unless we prompt him. What's new is the incontinence. We don't have any warning. He just goes. Well, we call it Code Brown. Which is to say, it is going to get physically more demanding, and there is no way that you can be expected to deal with the entirety of this by yourself. It is okay to have support or to wish that they were somewhere else or to take them to the care that they need for the latter stages. Or this. Forgive me for being blunt, Alice, but he really needs to hear this. I shouldn't feel this way, but I do. There are times where I really wish he were dead. I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, but I do. I wish that he was gone, not suffering anymore, so we could mourn him and move on. Thank you. A lot of us feel exactly the same way. It's a natural reaction. And it's okay. So, Robert, how is Anne doing? I feel the same way. I'm ashamed to say it. Even though she paints, that's all she does. It's, it's something. And I can't imagine what it's like inside. And to be honest, I've kind of decided that she's not in there anymore. Why? Because the thought of her being there and being trapped is just unthinkable. She knows you're caring for her. I don't know what she knows. Isn't it better if she doesn't? Are you always at home now? We have to be close to her studio. I think painting is the only thing that gives her comfort. Uh, I don't want her to be scared. Why don't you plan a trip? Go somewhere together while you still can. Yeah? You can do that? Well, there is a window of time that is closing, but if she's able to, maybe you can take her somewhere, go see something together before it takes hold of the center. Well, we always wanted to go to Belgium. <laughs> we had arguments about the architecture. I like it, and she hates it. Well, take her there and go prove your point. Yeah? Well, what's she going to do? Argue with you? <laughs> go. It'll be good for her. And for you. Who knows? 
Right. Who knows? Anne's studio. Anne stands painting Arbutus. So it's been decreed. I'm not mad. There's an actual medical problem. They think it might be Pick's disease or perhaps a tumor. I'm told surgery is a great risk, but the only chance of returning to any semblance of normal. It might cure me, but will most likely not go well if it's a tumor. It's not a tumor. There's no tumor. You don't know that. I do. Don't have the surgery. Don't just give up. Why not? What's better? If you can answer that. I don't know. I can't. You can't. Pathetic. Shall I hang around until I forget how to breathe? That's what you do. That's just cruel. No, no. What's cruel is you expecting me to wait and wait for something that will never come and have hope in something that is supremely hopeless. By definition, insanity. It's perverse in the extreme. I want to be able to write music. And although I am a composer decidedly of the second tier, without that, I don't know why I'm on this earth. It's not to love or to be a father. My children are my notes. And if I cannot tend to them, it is best that I am not. We can live with these conditions for longer now. You might be a little tough for you to understand. Why would you want to live longer? If my diagnosis is wrong, that suits me just fine. Every single person in that group Robert went to, to a man, each one of them wishes their partner was dead. Robert wishes you were. And if you ask any of the people who have this, whether the pleasures they take are worth the pain, I'll wager all of them say no. I do. That the knowledge they're creating so much pain around them, as well as feeling incapable, that makes a pretty good case for letting the diagnosis be wrong. Letting them have a surgery that will quite possibly cure them, but will most likely kill them, but at least they die in their sleep. With their last conscious thoughts, a shred of hope and a formal goodbye to those who are left. There's dignity in that. And you, with all your advanced medical science, you get to watch your mind decay to the point where you shit yourself daily before you choke to death. And everyone who loves you has to watch. Is that better? What is that but exquisite torture? And arrogance on the part of those who think discovery is worth the human cost. Well, there is a cost. And for what? For what? There's an elegance in nature, Anne, which has beginnings and endings. It's hubris to fight against that after a point. Have you ever thought that maybe I have it better? What are you doing? Why do you want to live longer? What are you painting? Why, Anne? He doesn't think I'm here anymore. I can't bear that. So I'm making him the leaves, the tree we got married under. My cruncher. A hotel room in Ghent with a view a month later. So, here we are. He rolls her up to the window. She taps on the armrest of her wheelchair. She takes his hand in hers. Yeah, I, I wanted you to have a chance to see all this since you always told me this architecture was horrid and I think it's not bad. You see, it's not. And I, well, I wanted you to see for real. This was a shit idea. I, I thought this would be a good trip. I don't know how much of this you can hear or understand or what, I really don't. Sometimes I think you're really not there anymore. And then I feel that you are. I can't tell whether it's just what I want to be true. I can't bear the idea of you being gone and still here. I think I can cope with you dying at this point. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to be morbid uh, to your face. <laughs> Carol says it's okay to talk about. But I can cope with you dying. What I can't cope with is you not being here and still looking into your eyes and not knowing. Is that selfish? Yes, I suppose. But can you hear me? Can you just do something? Are you there? Anne, do you, please, Anne, should I, 
I, I can't. And will you? She lets his hand go. Studio. Robert rolls Anne in and sets up her paints and easel for her, all within arm's reach. Okay, all set, if you want to. I, I know since we got back, sleeping's been a, bit, a little tough. So if you don't feel like doing it, just tap or, or uh, ring the bell. Well, damn. Okay, I'll just leave you to it then. And studio. Well, it's something new, so I thought you should see. On the wall, Ghent. Well, she's not painting photorealism anymore, <laughs> but, but it's incredibly detailed. Where's the picture she worked from? There isn't one, but here's the view from the window of our hotel. Oh my God. Our memory, my God. This, this is the onset of a new ability in the middle of- Yeah. <laughs> Anne. Oh, it's okay, honey. Just stay there. Let me show you what I brought. I have your scans. Can you see? So there is definitely deterioration in the front, but look at the back. There, the back is actually working more than normal. Do you know what this means? No. And this part, this improved part, and that's you. Anne's studio later that week. Anne stands looking at Ghent. So I'm in Morocco on a camel. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ida thinks it'll do me a world of good. I've been bloody miserable. I think everyone's mm -hmm. sick of me moping. So they've carted me off to Morocco. And I have to tell you, the heat is magnificent. Stop it. <laughs> and so is the guide, Mustafa. He has the most lovely brown skin. I almost, <laughs> well... The spices I smell in the souk, it's remarkable. Oh, and there's this fellow who really does make a snake dance. Hmm. I think they've defamed the cobra. They say they haven't, but it dances in front of him like this. <laughs> and the song they play has these harmonic minors and shifts. It makes the snake stand straight up. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> hey, hey now. Well, hmm. I almost feel like I can start hearing the music. I, I just can't remember it or write it down. That's the agony of this. It goes and I know it goes. I think I'd rather have that other kind of, um, what did you call it? Alzheimer's. Yes. I'd rather mm. not know. Yes. In the hotel room last night, I got a melody down. <laughs> a scratch, but it's the most I've done in years. I think it's the trip that's done it. I mm. might be headed for recovery. Dear old Ida, she always knows what to do. Perhaps she loves me after all. It's not too late. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Sorry, I'm so <laughs> delighted going on about myself the entire time. Uh, no, I'm glad you're feeling better. Just don't be disappointed if this is... What? A little eye in the storm and there's a larger cloud behind it. Oh, you really aren't that sweet. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something I shouldn't. Oh, do go on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how you are remembered. Ah, uh, if you do, I'll never be able to write another note. You won't anyway. Fair enough. Out with it. Mm. You're not a second-rate composer. Your output's not huge, granted, but you're the only composer whose entire body of work is played. There's nothing that's unknown or neglected. We treasure all of it. And yes, Valero's the most famous, but we even know it was the beginning of your disease, like mine. Is that because of you? I, I think so, yes, but it's the more remarkable for it. We know that the repetition was something so much more than you could say. And audiences will wonder, who were you? How you felt, what beauty really is, what madness really is, all of that for many, many years. So you're saying that's a good day's work then? I'm saying you need not have a burr in your heart. Your work will be a living monument to you. Rest easy. I'm going to have the surgery. I know. It's the right thing to do. Didn't say it wasn't. Well, you sounded sad, so I thought you didn't approve. I don't. They think it might be a tumor. The likelihood is so very small, but if it is, they can make me better. Hmm. And if not, 
Well then, there's Ida and Bolero and Mustafa, lovely Mustafa, <laughs> and Morocco, and I suppose you. What they don't know is I can see everything. I can see everything. That's the tragic mystery of life. But it only reveals itself once you're unable to report back. It's not religious or mystical. It's just all neurons. I'm going to roll out of here one last time, get the leaves, and come back again. And then that's going to be that. And why is that it? Because I'm not going to roll out of here ever again. And I'll be damned if I park without him knowing. Living room. Anne rolls in. She drops another dry leaf on the ground and rolls over it. <laughs> Cruncher. It's our tree. You're still there. A formal speaking engagement. And so, to conclude, uh, what is the biggest aha I have ever encountered? Anne Adams and her connection to Ravel. The amount that we can learn about how the mind works because of how art is, is made and perceived is so vast. And we're at the very beginning uh, of this field, and she could be regarded as its mother. You're all here because you knew and, and loved her, and I am proud to say that I had the honor that I was her doctor. And to deliver her eulogy, I would like to introduce her husband and uh, my friend, Robert. Thanks. Um, so, Albert Einstein said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. And Anne was a mystery. She was vast. I have two things. First, here's what she said. This might be the last letter I write you, so I ought to tell you what I can while I still can. Know, darling, that I love you, whatever I've said or will say. It's for forever. You're my cruncher and you will always be my cruncher. Let's stop for a bit. Okay, I'm back. Patterns, I can see patterns everywhere and it's so beautiful. It almost makes me angry. I heard it in Bolero because it sounded like a nautilus shell, like a sunflower, golden, 1.6118. You can see it if we stop talking. Stop talking. It's for everyone. It's for anyone, this gift. Play it, Cruncher, and show them. You'll know. She wanted you, her friends, her family, the people who she loved and who loved her, to her community, to know that she... Stop talking. You know what? She maintained that this disease was a gift. I'm not sure I understand that yet, but she said that I would know if I did this. So let's do this together before we go. Her eulogy is this. 
and let that be her legacy. Unraveling Bolero. Thank you. 